All right. Um, welcome. This is another video mainly pertaining to your problem set 11, and mainly your reactions for test three. And I will say there are a lot. You might have remembered me alluding, if you were in office hours before, um, that test three for semester two is probably one of the hardest OCHEM exams you will take. And it's mainly because of the sheer magnitude of mechanisms and reactions. Right? But on the plus side, you guys are already this far. You know how to make flashcards. You know how to study for these reactions. You know um, how to do mechanisms. You know how to make resonance structures. You know, like, acid-base rules, right? You've come this far. Out of the eight OCHEM exams, you are taking the seventh one, right? So even though this might be the hardest, you can better prepare for this by, well, take notes, coming to class, paying attention, um, doing the homework. Yeah, it's kind of it. All right. Well, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. There we go. Um, I should be posting the PDF to this uh, completed later. If I don't post up the announcement with this video, uh, just shoot me a message. I'll get it up. All right. Okay. Let me pull this up. We should be ready to go. Okay, you should see my screen. So the main thing that we have to talk about are, well, <laughs> there's the sheer number of reactions, right? So personally, I categorize them by um, their reactivity or like what kind of, you know, reactions they do. Because there's no one single way to organize it. You may organize it like these are all of the amide related reactions. These are all the ester related ones. Or you might be thinking this is all of the um, acid catalyzed or base promoted, or these are all of the dehydration ones, the hydrolyzed ones. It, there's many ways to do it. And the way I'm doing it does not mean you have to organize your notes this way too. This is how I'm doing it. But for my flow, the main first one is something that I want to um, share with you guys because I recognize these as our most reactive, you know, one, two, three, right? These are going to be our most reactive. Acyl chlorides and anhydrides are pretty unnatural. They will break apart relatively easily. So you don't really need a catalyst or any kind of promotion. For an acyl chloride, for example, just reacting it with water, an HOH, I'm writing water as HOH mainly because, you know, an alcohol group this is an alcohol. So like if R was CH3 and that was an OH, that would be methanol. Well, water is just a hydro alcohol, if you think about it. So that's kind of all you need. And you will get that because you have a nucleophile right here, the OH, it'll attack here. And you'll have like your all your proton transfers, all that nasty stuff. Or you can just do straight up NaOH. You will get the same thing. Plus chloride for both of them. Or if you have an anhydride, right? Uh, same deal. HOH or NaOH, you will get the same deal. You will get OH and another OH or a carboxylate, depending on which one you use. It doesn't really matter. It, you get the same thing. The carboxylic acids is the main thing we're looking for, right? So like if you were to react with alcohol, it would nucleophile attack one of these partially positive carbonyls, break that, hydrolyze it, you know, an H plus will stick onto there. The OH minus will stick onto there. Um, because we'll visualize the hydrolyzations um, later. Now we go to the um, carboxylic acids, right? Carboxylic acids are the next step of reactivity. They're not as reactive as acyl chlorides or anhydrides, but they're still reactive. So for alcohols, right, if we were to react it with NaOH, well, you might be thinking, well, couldn't this just nucleophile attack right here? And then like, it'll do rearrangement. Yeah, it could for maybe like a small portion of the, um, Reactions because you get the same thing. An OH replacing an OH group doesn't mean anything to us as chemists. Um, however, the big thing I want to note: this is an acid. This is a base. When you mix an acid and a base, you will get a um, acid-base reaction. No exceptions, right? The only way you can bypass an acid-base reaction is if you like overload it. Like if you do excess acid or excess base. An example would be like um, CH three NH two. Right, amine groups are usually basic, right? So if you do an excess amount, well, you will overload the system with a base promotion. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What if you do a weak base? And weak bases in general are just going to be any kind of like ROH group, 
right? Any kind of alcohol would act as a good weak base. So methanol, for example, right? That's a good weak base. And now for weak bases, you kind of need a little more oomph to replace the OH because this, an OH is a bad leaving group. But if you activate it by oversaturating it with um, H3O plus, now maybe oversaturating is a bad word because that means a different thing in chemistry, but overloading it with protons, you can activate it and you can get in a sterification. Whatever your R group was, is here. And note, esterification creates water. So dehydration, it's a type of dehydration, okay? Now for esters, they're not as reactive as carboxylic acids, but they are pretty handy because they're not really protic. You will learn that like um, alpha carbons can be pretty uh, protic or acidic, but that's Dr. Berg's job. We'll hold off on that for now, right? So if you were to react it with like any kind of strong base, so a strong base, is the conjugate base of any of those weak bases. So like if you just remove the H, right, you get OCH3 minus, right? So if you get NaOH, that's, that's a strong base because that's just HOH, but you deprotonate it. Or these bullet points don't mean they're having the same time. These are just like either or, a different scenario. Or like um, OCH3, not OCH3, let's do CH2, CH3, because we already did CH3. Um, this, you know, they would just dissolve in um, a solution, you would have these strong bases left, right? So if you just have those strong bases, well, just react them with the OCH3 and you'll get um, something like this. So if I were to do the um, OH, I would get you know, carboxylic acid, you know, or I would get, you know, OCH2, CH3, right? This is kind of like a saponification kind of deal. However, what if we were to promote it, right? Not promote it with the base, but let's catalyze it. We can make the reaction go faster if we, you know, did a weak base, right? Let's do like just an HOR, whatever. But if we had an H3O plus, an acid catalyzed reaction, well, we're going to make it go faster because we are overloading it with protons. So if we were to do like H2O and H3O plus, right? That's just our hy general hydrolysis reaction. We are removing the OCH3 in place for our OH. And remember, all of this follows Le Chatelier's principle. We can... Even if something's um, energetically unfavorable, you can push it forward by overloading it with reactants, something you you did in lab. Or if we had like a different kind of alcohol, let's bring back the um, ethanol, CH2, CH3, H3O+, right? Well, what would that be great? You do transesterification, O, CH2, CH3. So this is a transesterification. It's a hydrolysis. Sponification. Blah, blah, blah. Now we get to the least reactive ones. We get amides. And the, the least reactive is because look at that leaving group. You have NH2. NH2 is a bad leaving group. Why? Well, look at that conjugate. Right? You know that. Okay, let's just look at it this way. NH2, you know, is a frequently small, strong base. It will not want to give up that spot. Well, if you did an ROH, well, wouldn't really do much. All that would do is just protonate that amine because you have an amine group. It's or an amine moiety. It's basic, but if you were to overload it with protons, for example, you would get CH three C O O H. You would push the reaction this way. Now you might be thinking, well, isn't you just said NH two is a bad leaving group? Yeah, it is, and because of that, these reactions are usually going to be slow. Uh, but we again, we can still push it with Le Chatelier's. Le Chatelier's. <laughs> I just spelled that wrong. Uh, and usually we're going to accompany it with some like heat. Heating it up usually helps. Usually you might see that, you might not. That That's not the point. Now let's try to react it with a different way around. You know, we were creating carboxylic acid with an amide, but let's react carboxylic acid, something like this, NH2. So what I'm basically doing is this reaction, uh, there we go. This reaction is just getting this group into that group, right? So, well, what do we do there? Well, again, if you have an acid, right, and a base, no matter what, there's nothing else accompanying it, you get an acid-base reaction. If you have nothing here, no acid or base promotion, you are going to get just an acid-base reaction. You get a very inactive carboxylate, and then that conjugate um, amine. Right, that's all you get. 
Um, what if you had an ester, for example, right? Well, esters are cool because again, it's not acidic, right? It's not acidic. So if you're reacting with CH3, NH2, the same kind of spiel, right? You would get something like this. NHCH3, right? You get that nucleophile because of those electrons here, nucleophilic attack over here, okay? And you might be thinking, well, how does that work? Well, let's look at the conjugate basis. So an OCH3 group and then an NH2 group. Let's, let's break it down. CH3, NH. These are the conjugate hypothetical bases. Well, our NH has a much stronger base than OCH3. You might be thinking, well, why? Well, if you look at H... OCH3 and CH3 and H2. Well, this is the weaker acid. So you have the stronger conjugate base, right? Because the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. So it would proceed in that direction. Granted, is it perfect? No, but we're, we're chemists. We will push things with Le Chatelier's. We're just looking for the product if we were to react this. This is the focus of the lecture, obviously. Now, what if we were to go backwards, right? Let's do that same CH or NHCH3 and let's hydrolyze it, right? H2O, HCl. All right, this is acid catalyzed. Well, you remember, well, that HCl is going to activate it. And with an activated um, carbonyl, we can get that water in there to react. So we would get something like this, right? And note, I really want to emphasize the presence of this, right? For amides, they're pretty inactive, but you, if you have an acid catalyst or base promotion, it's going to react. Granted, it is going to be slow, like I said, yeah, because I think you'll have an intermediate that looks something like this. I think that intermediate is like, you'll have like the geminal OH group, like this is the activated... Ion, NH2, CH3 with a positive charge here, stuff like that. And with this kind of configuration, you know, you can kick out that leaving group. But that's just the intermediate. If you want to look at the mechanism, look in your notes. This video is focused on reactions for your problem set, not for mechanisms. That's something you should do on your own. Now let's uh, kick it up a notch. Let's do some base promotion. Let's take the same exact kind of molecule or functional group, right? Let's do H2O. Let's do NaOH, right? Now with the base promotion, well, we're devoid of protons, right? Well, we're devoid, devoid of protons. Well, we're still going to react very slow, but we are going to react. You would get something like this. Maybe thinking, what? That, that doesn't seem right because you have like a basic group here. And then you have a strong base. The only acidic thing you have is water. Well, this is what you would get, right? You you replace the um, NHCH3 with the OH and then it de deprotonates. So that's why you would obviously need a second step of like a hydrolysis, H3O plus. You protonate it. This is a different step. I want to emphasize that. Because once you have that um, oh, carboxylate, then you can protonate it and then you get your desired product. Because chemistry is not all in one fell swoop. So if you had something like this, let's say you had... Basic amide group right here. The first step, if you did NaOH, H2O, and then for the second step, H3O plus, and you can see this as like HCl or heat, right? Well, the first step I know is going to be a base promoted, um, base promoted aminolysis. I'm, I'm losing my mind. Base promoted. And then we protonate in the second step. The same exact thing we just saw up here, right? You promote the base, right? Normally that would be that minus charge, but because of that um, protonation, it's going to be OH. It's going to look like that, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to get into some weird reactions, right? Okay, let me flip it this way. Okay, now we're going to get some weird reactions. So primary means are something, <laughs> it's really hard to get to, right? Because... The primary means, I means are hard to make. You need some, like maybe some hydrazine or like the, um, again, the free free small strong base. But without me rambling on, let's just go ahead and try to get, get on with it. So a uh, way you can get into a mean is through a nitrile group. So nitrile group, if you remember, is just a cyanide group, right? 
So if I were to react as like um, HCN, right? You know, this is literally test two from semester one, HCN. We add the um, acid across the double bond, CN. And that CN, if I were to redraw it, looks something like this. C triple bond N, right? Now, two pathways can be done. The one we already know, I think this is like a test one concept from semester two. Let's do like H2 rainy nickel. Let's um reduce it, right? So this triple bond right here, we're destroying those bonds and instead replacing it with H's. All right. So with that, we create something that looks like this, right? The H that's still added from over here. And now CH2 and H2, right? Hey, that works. We have a primary mean now. Another way we can do it is, well, a mechanism that we just learned is if you have a, um, a nitrile group and you hydrolyze it, we get... A carboxylic acid. And there are ways to reduce that carboxylic acid, which you will learn. But this is a way to not exactly get a mean, but you can get a carboxylic acid. And with the carboxylic acid, you can make a bunch of other stuff. Now let's try to work with something like this. So you know, let's let's do an SN2. So if you know you have a leaving group that's primary, right? A primary leaving group, you react it with a strong base. What do you get? You get an SN2. So you react with OH, you get a primary alcohol. If you react it with NH2, Right here, this is an SN2, because remember, again, primary leaving group, you get an SN2 that looks like this. Or if you do another different type of SN2, like let's do an SN2 with a CN, right? SN2. SN2 with a CN, that's a weak base. But still, the fact that it's primary, it can react with a weak base. You're going to get something like this. And again, you can do your normal spiel of um, rainy nickel. H2, rainy nickel. There are other ways to reduce like LiAl H4, which is something you will learn, but for now, I'm just going to use rainy nickel, which is still valid, right? This is what I have. This carbon right here is the same carbon that I have here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Because I created a carbon-carbon bond with here, so I should up upgrade from a four carbon chain to a five carbon chain, which still retains. If you're if you have the wrong number of carbons on your test, we will dog points. So please keep that in mind. Now here's the broken part. So this this is ugly. We don't come on. That that's a lot, right? I know you guys, don't worry. Well, here's a handy thing, the Gabriel synthesis, right? So if you have the Gabriel um, reagent, right? Something that looks like this. Any kind of R group and a halogen, the most common one is going to be bromine. You're, I doubt you'll see anything else other than bromine, but another popular one is chlorine, right? An R group, something could be like CH2, CH3, uh, BR, right? Or um, uh, just normal CH3, BR, right? Well, if you react it with that, well, you just essentially replace that X with an NH2. NH2. So let's actually put some actual compounds in here. So let's do, let's bring back CH2, CH3, CH2, BR, right? We have a bromopropane. Well, normally the first step is going to be NaOH. Second step is going to be like, I don't know, HCl, H2O, maybe some heat. Fourth step is going to be NaOH. Something I want to note when you see the Gabriel synthesis, these are going to be Part of the solvent. They don't really matter. When you're putting pieces together, the only thing that really matters for the Gabriel synthesis is something that looks like this. And that's the one we want, right? So if number two is what we're looking for. Well, let's just take this carbon structure, right? CH3, CH2, CH2. And then instead of the BR, let's do NH2. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to this reaction, right? And obviously one of your side products is going to look something like this. That exact same reagent. OH, OH. And this um, side product is stabilized by these, right? One, two, three, one, three, and four. One, three, and four stabilize the reaction and stabilize the byproduct, all right? And essentially makes it go forward. Now, for one of the weird ones, let's 
Another weird one, let's do thionyl chloride. So if you know your um, war, <laughs> chemical warfare agents, right? Um, phosgene. Phosgene is something like this. It absolutely kills you. Like this is just a um a double uh acyl chloride, but it's absolutely terrible. But thionyl chloride, still toxic as hell. Looks something like this. No, not no S, which you know does help for chemistry, but it's still toxic as hell. Wouldn't recommend in a lab unless you're highly trained. But let's come back to chemistry. So if we did our normal reaction, H2O, if you remember from the very first reaction I talked about in the beginning of the video, right? H2O, it's a thionyl, not thionyl, acyl chloride is reactive enough to just react with it without an uh, acid catalyst. It'll just become a carboxylic acid. But in the reverse reaction, well, you can just get any kind of carboxylic acid, react it with um, thionyl chloride, SOCl2, you get that chloride back. So if you had, let's say, um, Right, a long chain. Let's not even do a long chain. Let's do it. Let's just do something like this, right? Final chloride, SOCl2. You just replace that OH with the Cl, right? It's pretty broken, but it's something handy to know. So if we had something like this, okay, let's take a normal um, propionic acid or propanoic acid, SOCl2. What do we get? Well, obviously we just replace that OH with Cl. Now, now that we have a, um, an acyl chloride, we can do so many things, right? Let's do our normal, like just a normal weak base, CH3, right? A weak base, we get a very good esterification reaction, right? Really easy. Or if you bring it back, if you remember your Friedel crafts, like we can react it with toluene, right? CH3, we get a friedel crafts reaction. This is especially helpful for a final, for a final exam when we try to put a bunch of stuff together. Or if you do um, NH3, right, you get an amide, NH2, right? And this is relatively quick because these, this is a good leaving group. You don't really need an acid catalyst or a base promotion. Now, I think... Um, Normally, you'll see an excess of this because NH2 or NH3 is still basic. So if you have an excess of it, it you're just overloading the system to make it go forward. But that's the general deal, spiel, right? Now, let's take an amide and react it with SOCl2. So hopefully, you guys see the difference. This is a non-substituted amide, right? Well, this is a primary amide, right? or secondary amide, it's attached to um, a chain. So if there are no branch groups on that NH2, you will get a reaction. It'll become something like this, or another way, um, CN, right? Because I have one, two, three carbons, one, two, three. Yeah, I still get, I still retain my three carbons, but you will get a cyanide, okay? So if you remember, well, what is it essentially the backwards version of? Well, that's kind of like the backwards version of our hydrolysis reaction. But that's for your notes. You just scroll back up. Now, if you had a substituted group, well, this, this doesn't have any free protons that it can like readily give up. Or, yeah, no, nothing that can readily give up. Because look at this nitro. There are no protons on those nitrogens. They're protonless. It's pretty sad. But these... Well, it has one proton, but it's not really going to give it up. So it's going to be no, no reaction. So if it's substituted, no reaction. If it's not, you're going to get a nitrile. Now let's go to the last main concepts, hydrolysis and dehydrations. So for hydrolysis, it's kind of the stuff that we've already been doing, right? So hydrolysis, you went over in class, where essentially if you have some kind of um, carboxylic acid derivative, right, you're going to have the carbonyl component right here, and then the um, electronegative group. <clears throat> Oh, excuse me, and the electronegative group. Well, hydrolysis essentially, well, H2O, HCl, maybe some heat to speed it up, splits that because look, think of it. This carbon we know is partially positive, and this is obviously partially negative because that's an electronegative atom. So if we split it and we split it using water. Well, water's components are going to be an OH minus and an H plus.
what's going to go to where? Well, your positive component is going to go to the partially negative. Negative component, component is going to go to the partially positive. That's how I think of it. So our reactant, not a reactant, our product would look something like this. CH3COH and HOCH3, right? This OH and that H are components of that water that we just broke apart. Same thing over here. Let's take a look. Partially positive, partially negative. We are to break that apart uh, with hydrolysis, H2O, HCl. And the normal way of drawing hydrolysis stuff is like H3O plus E, or you can just do the couple H2O, HCl, stuff like that. You kind of get a pattern the more you practice. CH3, C. O H H and H two, and in actuality that would be N H three. But I'm just showing you the pro where the proton is, so I can show you that that's where the water split. Even if you have something cyclic like this, right? This is in alpha beta gamma delta, delta lactone, right? Not delta. This is a gamma lactone alpha beta. Yeah, gamma lactone. My bad. Right. This is an <laughs> gamma lactone. Um, this is still an ester, right? This is an ester moiety. So if you were to split it, well, hey, you still have a partially positive, partially negative, right? OH will still attack here. H will still go here. So if you were to hydrolyze it, here, let's write it this way, H3O plus. And this, you would just break it apart. OH and OH, where, hey, look at it. The OH and the H came from the water, kind of like over here. The only thing different is that these carbon chains are connected. All right, they're connected. Now let's talk about um, dehydrations because dehydrations, he, oh my God, he gets a little crazy. So the main ways to dehydrate something is straight up with an acid catalyst. All right, or you have um, these two compounds, P2O5, a dehydrating agent, or you straight up just use heat. Now these are very made... <laughs> big major dehydration um, agents. So these create anhydrides. And HCl, well, if you react it with a carboxylic acid, you just get an esterification, right? And that, that, that makes sense because like you have carboxylic acid, you activate it, um, you're gonna get an esterification. So if you, you have this um, carboxylic acid, right? HCl, HOCH2, CH3, right? You just get something like this. You just get a transit ster not trans um Fisher esterification, CH2, CH3. And you have a byproduct of H2, which is why you want your um experiment to be very dry, dehydrated, because um if water is being produced, if you have any water in the reaction, well, it's gonna push that equilibrium backwards. And still by definition, by Fisher esterification, it's a dehydration. We're removing water from our products. So if we have something like this, right? Let's bring back this uh, absurd um, carboxylic acid and hydroxy, right? So we have um, two hydroxy moieties, right? They're in the alcohol group and they're in the carboxylic acid. So I have one alcohol group that's built in, built in, yeah, guys, and one carboxylic acid. If I did HCl, right, I would get an ester plus H2O, an ester. I'm just trying to show that carboxylic acid and alcohol make an ester. Maybe you're thinking, well, if it's just if it's just with HCl, don't you need an alcohol for a transesterification? Yes, you do but I only need HCl because my alcohol is, again, already built in. It's already in there. So if my alcohol is already built in, it's going to do that attack from all the way over here, right? So I don't need any kind of interfering alcohol group in there. No, that would compete for the reaction. I'm just going to close the ring from an alcohol or hydroxymoidy already built in. So I would get N, alpha, beta, gamma, lactone, right? Okay. So what if we change it up? What if we have two carboxylic acid? Two carboxylic acids, well, you dehydrate it, you create an anhydride. 
That makes sense because if you remove that OH and that H, well, let's take a look. Let's do P2O5. P2O5, right? We create, well, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We get a glutaric anhydride plus H2O, right? Where this water came from the waters we just took out over here. And this OH is the remnant that's right there. So if we dehydrate it, well, we create an anhydride. And you might be thinking, well, how do we break? Well, if you just want it back, just hydrolyze it. Because and remember, if you anhydrides, they're pretty reactive. Throw some water in there, well, they're going to fall apart. What if you just have a um, carboxylic acid, right? Carboxylic acid, let's throw again, P2O5. Well, if all you have is acetic acid or ethanoic acid in your solution, well, it's going to react with itself and create that anhydride. So it's going to create ethanoic anhydride because it's going to react with itself. Obviously, you can do like two times this amount. But it doesn't really matter because it's reacting with itself. It's in the same solution. Now, let's um, redo it. Um, with a different type of um, dicarboxylic acid, take with succinic acid. And let's do different um, dehydrating agent like heat. Well, we dehydrate it. We remove an H and an OH with that remnant O. So we would get something that looks like this. Right, we get succinic anhydride. So what is the point of this? Well, let me erase this arrow. I'm just trying to make note of the back and forth of everything. You dehydrate this, right? Let's look at the four branch. You dehydrate it. Um, this attacks here and you remove a water. So you end up creating something that looks like this, right? Another gamma lactone plus H2O, okay? That happens from that nucleophilic attack and the same kind of um, mechanism you knew. But let's hydrolyze it, H2O, HCl. Well, by that means we look. We break that bond. We stick the H back on there. We stick the OH back there. And what do you know? We get our same reactant. Let's do it again, but with um glutaric, not glutaric, succinic acid. You dehydrate it. All right. Dehydrate it. And this could also be HCl. Because, you know, HCl is still a dehydrating agent where you activate this. It becomes like H. With that positive charge, and then same same kind of mechanism. You guys get it. Let's just go and change that HCl works. <laughs> so the presence of alcohol, you put the water back in there, it's gonna break apart. You remove the water with just HCl. But with heat, let's do something like this. I might have just confused you like heat and HCl. Don't worry, don't worry about it. They're they do the same thing. Again, they do the same thing. Okay, I've been moving around. I apologize. But again, if you were to do the reverse reaction, you stick the H back there and the OH back here with H2O, H3O plus, you just, HCl, you just hydrolyze it and it goes back to its um, hydrated form, hydrated form, dehydrated form. So that's what this is trying to show. And if anything, really, oh, for the love of God, memorize this. I remember um, on my test, I blanked on this. I was so pissed. I think, yeah. It's okay. Don't worry. But the rest, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And most of this stuff comes through practice. I'm going to go and stop my share. It comes through practice, but don't be afraid to reach out to um, your TAs. Yeah. Any final words? Um, study hard. Yeah, that's kind of it.